deserialization is a little bit of a challenge. Yes, uh, let's talk about that first, and I'll talk about the other challenge we have. Actually, let me talk about the main challenge here. When you construct an API, which has a top level known as an object, let's say you want to enhance the object itself and say, OK, I want to have maybe add a field. right? You can do that without breaking the consumers. People who don't expect that field to be there, they don't care if you have if you're passing an extra field back in the response, right? They're just going to ignore it. People who need it can use it. Now, let's say I've created this API, which is a list of movies that the user has watched. But then I also want to add a field which says in the future, which is this is the user's full name, right? Hypothetical scenario. Let's say I want to enhance the API to do that. Now, what do I have to do? I cannot return the list anymore. I have to convert it into an object. Anytime you have to make that kind of an enhancement, when the enhancement is not to a particular object in the array, but you need something global, you have to take the contract out from a list to an object. And guess what? All those people who are expecting a list, their code is going to break, because it's not a list anymore. However, if you had an object to begin with, and even if you had one property of that object be a list, then what happens? You can add extra properties to it, and then your API is still backward compatible. Right? That's one of the reasons why I usually have an object wrapper in my API response, even if what I'm returning is just a list. Right? Something to keep in mind. That, that kind of ensures that your APIs are backward compatible. So that's one reason why you would want to wrap this into an object. Maybe create like a rating, um, user rating as an object, and then just have one property, which is a list. That'll do. But here's another reason why you want to have a list. Now here, in your movie catalog service, let's say I want to use the same operation to get the list of ratings. Let's say I'm going the list route, right? I'm not creating a wrapper object. I have a list route. Now here, instead of this hard-coded list of ratings, what I want to do is make a call to rest template, right? Let's say rest template dot get for object. Takes in two arguments. The first one is the URL. The URL happens to be this. And append it to it is the user ID, right? That gives me the URL. Of course, I have to get rid of this thing here. What's the second argument? It's the type you need to cast it to. What's the type here? List of ratings. And what class do I pass into? Can I pass list.class? I cannot do that. Yeah. It's a generic class, right? I cannot pass in rating. So what do I need to do is use something like a parameterized type. I don't even remember the syntax of the top of my head. I have to look this up. But there is, the, there is a way you can do this. You create an instance of a class called a parameterized type, and you pass in the type that you want. So it's going to be something like this, parameterized type. And then let me break this up into a new line. OK, parameterized type. And then the parameterized type is a list of rating, OK? And you create an instance of it. You have to supply your own implementation of an instance. So you create an inline class and then override that interface. And then that makes REST object, you know, the REST template happy. But why do this, right? You don't want to do this. You want to be able to pass in a single class. So that's one of the reasons why I try to avoid all this complication. Not that you shouldn't do this, but you know, make your life easier. I'm just going to create um, an object here. So I have a rating model. I'm going to create a, a user rating object, which is going to contain a list of ratings. Right? Create a new Java class. user rating, and this is going to be a private. So 
And now what I'm going to do here is when the return needs to happen, new user rating. user rating instead and this is going to be of type user rating restart this we haven't done a whole lot of improvements to the api except that we have prepared it for the future in case you need to make changes it's always going to be a root of an object all right let's refresh and we just get one level down right and so the uh the additional benefit of this is now I can copy this user rating class and use it in my movie catalog service. And that is going to be the second parameter to my rest template. Right? It knows how to cast a class. Is this in my model? And then go back to the resource, user rating dot class and I have to change this of course and now I can do ratings dot get user rating dot stream so basically I need to unwrap it since I've wrapped it over there unwrap it get the list and then stream and make these changes I'm going to put this at the bottom here so that away from side so this comment goes over here this is what we're doing here and then putting them all together is happening here right I'm taking the rating information from the looped object and the movie information from this movie object and I'm returning this so this is it we're actually making two API calls Right. Restart. Let's make sure this works. There's an error. Cannot construct rating. Okay, we are back to the same problem. User rating did not ha they had an empty constructor, but rating itself does not have an empty constructor. So let's fix that. This is in the There isn't a way to create an empty constructor in IntelliJ. Anybody know? All right. That's okay. It's always easier to remove code than to add it. All right. So now we have the response back. We, I'm kind of breaking my rule here because the user, the movie catalog service is actually returning a list, right? You see here? The, the edge service is returning a list. So I'm breaking my own rule here. We'll live with it because it's uh, if you want to spend too much time on this thing. 